It's the video of the day, LP and out nightmares away. Flat. And that way is evil. Because we're playing Resident Evil. It's not Luigi's Mansion or anything. Uh, <laughs> I'm your host, Nightmare, and tonight we have a guest. Uh, hi, I'm Owen, also known as the Immortalian Victor Chief Gaming, and I'm here to help Nightmares get through this pretty challenging game. Uh, we've definitely been running into some some problems, but we're also steadily getting better at it, I think, so that's all good. Um, so last time, I remember we were quite low on ammunition, which is a running theme, um, but I also believe we knocked the statue off of the, um, the, the area above us. Did we actually pick up the, 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 the whatever dropped? The spark? Map. Very helpful map. I I believe it's the triangle or the the Y, whichever the Yes. Oh we, yeah, we, we, did. we we picked up the, the first Chaos Emerald. <laughs> yes, I remember you saying that. Um so the blue gemstone, good, okay. So obviously what we're gonna do, we're gonna wanna put that away at some point. However, our weapon situation is critical. Yeah, yeah no it's, uh, it's a bit lacking. Mm. Now, we do technically still have a knife, which you could technically... Uh, there is actually an achievement in this game for, like, winning the whole game just using a knife, which is super impressive given some of the bosses in this game. Um, but, we, yeah, it would really help if we had more ammunition. I will take a look at that in a little bit. Um, first off, we still have only the sword key currently, right? Yeah, we, we haven't we haven't uh, assembled the entire armor set. Mm -hmm. So that's something we're gonna have to continue exploring for. Um, we have two inventory slots open, uh, which is helpful. It's not quite as much as I would like, but that's fine. So in that situation, oh, we have loads of ink ribbons, which is fantastic. So. In that case, we've got to make some choices here in terms of exploration. Now, how many areas in the upstairs have you actually explored? Just out of curiosity. So, yeah, you can move up here. And let's see. So, yeah, we haven't. We could theoretically go out onto that veranda area. However, the fact that we have pretty much no ammunition is a big concern. I can't remember what keys we need for that door that's on the bottom right. Um, you might as well just run up there and take a glance at it and see what key we need. Besides that... Yeah, just continue to explore. Do you remember what the, the run button was for the controller? Uh... No, oh, hang on now. The run button controller. Oh, she is technically running right now, isn't she? Automatically. Because I think you're on the alternative controls. Oh, right. Because uh, we're, oh, right, we're not tanking our way through this game anymore. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't this area that I was talking about. Uh, I was talking about the bottom right area. So On the first like, floor or the second floor? On this floor. Uh, the second floor. So basically, yeah, if you go across and then towards the window, there's a door. It just, okay, so just go right here, up this way. Now, which what key do we need for this door? The emblem of an of armor. Okay, so we need an armor key for that. Now, I actually do remember where one of the keys is. I, I think we came across it. Um, if you take a look at your map and you actually go to the third floor, um, oh, have we have we never been in the third floor? In that case, we'd actually yeah. Okay, so I know where a key is, but we don't have what we need yet to actually get it. Um, 
in which case it's... there's a bunch of zombies and we don't have am ammunition. Actually, it's not that. It's a trap. Um, yeah, we need Adam Lackbar here to... <laughs> to oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we need a... Uh... Oh, it's a trap. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. So, what about the... Um, did we check that door? Do you know... Um, where it was above the item uh, box, the safe box on the west side of the mansion. Uh, we checked the door that leads out to the veranda, but did we check that door at the top? I believe we would have, but I can't remember what it was. Um, uh, on the top left of the map or the top right of the map? Uh, top left. Um, so you see that rectangle um, that's kind of just by itself. I'm wondering about that one, and then there's that that door in the hallway as well. Which did we clear out all the zombies in that hallway? I can't remember if we did. I mean, we cleared out all the zombies near the first item chest. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know we found another one maybe up there. I don't know if the zombies are dead. Tell you what, um, well, I'll let you explore uh, for the moment. And So yeah, this door won't be um, won't be available because we'd have to go out onto the veranda. Oh, by the way, I will say actually, if you because you mentioned this last time, so you already know. If you're gonna go onto that veranda, like even with like only one shotgun shell and uh, your knife, basically to fight everything else there. Careful, there is a zombie walking around here. So I have to be cautious. But you'd need the dog whistle to bring that with you out into the veranda if you're going that way. Right, because we the dogs. That would mm -hmm. be rough if we didn't have that. Hey. <laughs> yeah, don't. I'm not trying to be a chew toy to um, dogs that are only mostly dead. Oh, uh, at least you're not barking up the wrong tree. Uh, it's his his bark is uh, actually his bite is worse than his bark. I've I've been told. Oh uh, yeah, actually very appropriate given that we're playing a zombie game. <laughs> okay, so if you're gonna go in here, you may as well drop off the diamond because there's a safe box in here, and that diamond we don't need currently. We're shining like a diamond. Yeah. Speaking of which, actually, there is um. You know what? I'll 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 recommend it to viewers. I don't know what your own personal tastes are in games, but uh, I'll recommend it to viewers. Uh, there's a fantastic old game that I really like called uh, Shining in the Darkness, um, which is the first game in, Sh in the Shining series. Not to do with Stephen King's Shining, that's a very different... <laughs> that's, that's, a very a, different. That's, that's, that's a bit different. Yeah. So basically, viewers, if you've uh, heard of Shining Force, which are very famous um, tactical RPGs, um, Shining in the Darkness came before that. But it's quite different in that it's a first-person dungeon crawler RPG. Uh, very good. You can get it on Steam for 99 cents. So uh, considering I put like 30 hours in that game, that's a steal. Um, just going to throw it out there because you mentioned Shining in the... What did you say? The, oh, the, the Shining Like a Diamond? The... Shining Like a Diamond, yeah. The, that was it. Yeah, And it just reminded me of that. This guy is, is not, a, not a threat as far as I'm aware. So I wouldn't be too concerned about him. The door I was talking about of examining is up the stairs to her left. Um, over here. What do we need to actually get into that door? Uh, the one, one, this one? Uh, no, that door we have no. Oh, that's already that's the open. that's the yeah. I, I, that's, the, that's the door that's on its last limbs. Mhm. Mm An emblem of a helmet. Okay. Uh, a lot of locked doors. Yeah, it's been a minute since I played a Fire Emblem game, so I don't know. Oh yeah, Fire Emblem, because... Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm, um, I think I'm mixing up all these references now, because I was talking about Shining Force, which is kind of a precursor to Fire Emblem. You're talking about the whole, uh, yeah, the emblem of it. Yeah, I get it, I get it. Okay. Then, then so... Then again, in some older Sonic games, there's some emblems that you 
Oh kind of yeah, about those. In fact, actually, yeah, the emblems from um, Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure. Games, so, yeah, I completely forgot about oh, those. Oh, hi, uh, uh, hi, uh, Jake from State Farm. <laughs> I, I was wondering where you ended up. That's um, gonna go. Yeah, so Jake is as good a name as any for that chap. That lovely chap who spends the entirety of the game, and whenever I play it at least, just going around that, um, that little... I don't even know what you call that. Is it a inside veranda? Is that what I have no idea. I've just been thinking about it as the, um, baby, uh, park from Mario Kart. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because he, like, goes around. He must have liked that game, or that stage in life, so he ended yeah. up doing that when he was dead. Turns out he used to be a construction worker. He was the one who built that room. He loves it so much he can't leave it. <laughs> How unfortunate. Very unfortunate. So, yeah, this is the room that we, well, not room, actually, uh, but this is the door we already examined. Oh, right, we've um, been here. We don't want to end up like Jake. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that would be a fate worse than death. A fate, a fate, a fate. Words. A, a fate worse than undead. Yeah. Very, very um, good. No, 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 I'm doing it again. Oh no! Yeah, you're, uh, you're becoming him. <laughs> no. I have, I have, I have stooped so low as to become Jake. Now, we can't go in that door at the top right. I think we checked that last time, didn't we? Yeah, um, because, like, it's a one-way or, or it's locked or something. It's locked. I believe the one-way one is downstairs at a certain point or something like that. Yeah, one way or another, we'll get through this mansion. <sighs> one way, yeah. One bullet at a time. Because one, that's all we have on us right now. One bullet to move them all. <laughs> one bullet to bang them, which sounds a bit dirty, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I thought this was a... I mean, I guess it's not a kid-friendly game. No, it isn't, yeah. So, is there a path out... What's the deal with outside again? That should be on the map, right? Oh, yeah, there. There's a locked door there, outside, but I don't think it leads to where we... I don't think we can go in it right now, I don't think. We can check it anyway, though, because I do believe, if I'm correct, I'm just going to tell them, folks, I do believe there's some ammunition outside. So we could go around searching for it. However, I also believe there's two zombies walking around out there right now. So it's a bit of a risk. So you can go out and look for that ammo if you want and check the door. Or we can go somewhere else. It'll be up to you. Uh, which door are we referring to? Um, so the door that leads outside, not the not the door to the back. So you know the the kind of red area to the north, yeah, in the middle. That's what I'm referring to. So the it's door is running right 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 now. It's so much easier to click doors or to enter doors when, with a controller. Oh yeah, I can imagine. In fact, there's a lot of things in this game. That's easy to do with a controller, to be completely honest. Just because of the way that it was developed. Oh, God. Yeah, just avoid this guy. What am I... <laughs> okay, you, yeah, you, that was the expert uh, weave. So, I believe... Yeah, do you see there, there's some boxes of ammunition uh, on the left. Now, how are we going to get past this guy? I'm not sure. We do have one shotgun. Oh, boy, okay. Okay, at least... Okay, so what is this one again? There we go. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Um, there's so we're gonna... We're gonna wanna put more shotgun shells into the... Um, how many shotgun shells did we get? We got six, actually. That's pretty good. Now, do you remember how to kill a zombie in one go with the shotgun? I gotta aim for his head. Yes. Um, I don't know if you want to do that now, if you want to, like, duck and weave past it. I'll leave it up to you. Dang, I'm getting the hang of it. So, do you remember that last door we want to examine this? 
not that one, but oh. it's fine. At least we have more rounds of ammunition. That's and always really helpful to have. Ammunition. Okay, so since we're up here now... Um, are we talking about the other red door outside? Yeah, that was the one I was talking about, but I wouldn't bother now, because I don't even think that door is open. I don't think. I don't think we can open it. Um, I could be wrong, folks. I could be wrong, but I don't think we can. Turns uh, out that, you... that's how you beat the game. And... <laughs> yeah, if only. <laughs> uh, that's the final... Nah, it's not. Um, so do you see the two red doors that are in the hallway on the left, the first hallway that we ever went into and where we died for the first time? Have you examined those two doors to see if either of them need the sword key? Uh, uh, on the left? Uh, yes. So, uh, so like, north of the room with the typewriter. Um, oh, like the cleared out area, like the area that's like clear? Uh, it's green, as far as I'm looking at it. Oh, green. I will head towards there. Yeah, let's take a look at those two doors. Of course, I could just look up a map and see which doors need the sword key, but hey, you know, I might as well have a little bit of fun as well and, like, try to remember which doors will uh, allow you to proceed. That way, it, it, it's a double blind pl placebo <laughs> effect. Yeah, just a, it's more just a memory. One person's playing blind and one person kind of remembers the game. <laughs> I mean, it might be important that if you remember, that, you know, you're the one guiding me. Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, I think you'll, I think it, we'll just do the double blind. Yeah. Oh, that would be, that'd be quite fun. Um, so yeah, this door, these two doors on your left here, you may as well examine. Yeah, you can examine. Wasn't this so, the door that, that they got the, the steel frame time. from? Or is that a different door? Uh, Wait, that we got the what from? The still fr when the zombie walked up and his arm just stopped when we clicked the door. Oh, I think it was this door. Yeah, I think I remember now. Yeah, that was a <laughs> while ago now. Yeah, I only bring it up because like I wa like was watching that video recently. <laughs> yeah, I bet it was just hilarious to watch. You don't we say. Armor. Okay. Yeah, we're uh, running into all sorts of stumbling blocks here. I, I guess I just have to go s steal it from a, a, a chessboard or something. <laughs> that would be very helpful. Um, in which case, where else haven't we gone yet? Um, so there is um, a few places to the top right that we haven't gone yet. Um, if you want to go there, you, you are free to do so. I do. I do feel like um, you're I will now say, free to move about the cabin. <laughs> so I do. I was gonna say I do feel sometimes like I am kind of guiding you a bit too much, um, but I am also kind of wanting to try to keep things flowing to some degree. Um, so I do think now is a good opportunity to kind of just because I actually can't remember exactly where this last door is. Um, so you may as well like run around and just kind of explore, um, and then once I can put things together. I don't like that sound. Now, I could be wrong. I think there are birds here, so that could be the sound of a crow. Or a raven. That really sounds like birds to me. Oh, I do love this shot. Actually. There's a lot of fantastic like cinematography in this game. Oh yeah, they they definitely went all out. Yeah, and actually, sadly, this game it it wasn't rewarded really at the time. Um, when this came out on GameCube, it under the four. Oh yeah, there they are. Um, and that's part of why they kind of rejigged Resident Evil Four to make it a bit more actiony. Um, which did prove to be a big success, because um, Resident Evil 4 is often considered to be one of the greatest games of all time. Uh, I guess they went but, action mode. Yeah, well, I would say they really went action mode when it got to Resident Evil 5. Like, that's where, like, when Chris is, like, punching a rock, like, absolutely, like, Oh, yeah, the like, the, the guy who didn't skip leg day, or arm day. 
<laughs> yeah, I think I showed you a picture of him, didn't oh, I? Oh, yeah, in the first couple of us, yeah. Oh, yeah, he just looks ridiculous. Uh, that is kind of a fun game, though. Bad AI when it comes to your companion, but, uh, you know, I enjoy Resident Evil 5 myself. It was actually the first Resident Evil I ever played. Uh, but I do consider... Like, this is my personal pick for my favorite Resident Evil. Okay, I don't know if we've been in here before. This is actually the area that I was talking about when I thought we had been here, but we hadn't. Death is only the beginning. Okay, that isn't that doesn't actually tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, no. So, oh, yeah, this big ominous statue here. It's safe for the moment. I'll tell you if because it would be quite annoying to lose our progress at this point. Um, although I do think you could just very easily rectify it. But you are safe. You can examine up here safely. Now the big concern here, you see, is actually this right here. Oh, so the, there's an the, item there. The big oh. If you take it, the, the trap will engage. Yes, the, it will activate and those statues will come and smush you. Now the sad thing is this is one of the keys we need. Um, so at some point we're going to want to like swap around. Now I don't, I don't know if we can actually like place our current key there. I've never tried it that way. I don't think it's quite the same shape. Uh, what's the top look like again on that? Yeah, you see, it's like, um, it's, it's uh, octagonal. It's, it's, it's spherical instead of... This one's yeah, spherical! Um, so, in in that case, uh, I'm sure that was a reference I missed. The, I actually don't know what that's from. Um, but, yeah, I don't think we can swap this. We need to look for a key that looks like this, so that we can actually swap around. Um, but, okay, at least you have that in your mind right now. Um, we can continue exploring up here if we want. As I said, we're safe, um, for the moment at least. So death is only the beginning and death is everything. Yeah, so this guy won't harm you, but what he will do is very annoyingly go forward and stop you from actually, like, being able to go up this way, like flee the other one. If oh. the trap is set, of course. So, um, you don't say. <laughs> and the key is probably right there. It might be, yeah. Actually, if it's a, if it's a, if it's the helmet one, then yeah, that might actually be the key. Oh, uh, that is quite a tease, though. But it's like a, quite a fun tease of like the key is just there out in the open, but we can't take it because we need to swap it around. Like what? Did Indiana Jones try to do that in uh, Rage of the Lost Ark? I can't remember. But you know the, the scene where he tries to swap around his stuff. It, it seems fine, and then all of a sudden the trap goes off and the boulder goes after him. Uh-oh, um, yeah, probably. I think he tried to do that and had to replace his whole plan. I don't know. He should have just called the replacements. <laughs> yeah. The, the Indiana Jones movies would be very much less exciting, but much more straightforward if he could just call in the replacement. Have you? Did you see the new one? The new Indiana Jones? No, I haven't. Actually, these days I hardly ever go to the cinema. Um, I much prefer to watch stuff from the comfort of my own home, just because. I guess I'm. I don't like to say that I'm antisocial, but there's just. I don't know, it's just the fact that I'm watching a movie with a whole bunch of other people, all of whom will have, whom will have like, all their, their kind of different opinions. I don't know. But, yeah, uh, I watched it on Amazon Prime. And did you like it? Yes. Oh, that's good. I'm I'm, glad to hear that. Uh, I mean, I'll wait to say anything if you ever see it. Yeah, I'd hold off. I, I don't know how much of a priority is for me, but, you know, I have seen the previous, like, Indiana Jones movies, so, you know, maybe I'd give it a shot at some point. Um, but I wouldn't say it's a big priority for me right now. In fact, yeah, my you, taste... you should just okay. save that shot for me, because I need more ammo. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah, 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 give a shot. Perfect. So, um... What I was going to say was that, I, have I actually spoken about my own personal tastes when it comes to, like, films and stuff on here before? I can't remember if I have. Uh, 
I don't think the topic ever really came up. Yeah, I may I may as well touch it. Um, so, um, like I I have some very interesting uh, tastes when it comes to the media that I consume. Um, so, just to give some context, I guess, like this is quite a good. I'd like to use this as kind of a theme. Um, when it comes to how divergent my kind of hobbies are. So, um, there's a show that my father loves to watch. Um, it's a British show. Uh, it's called Pointless, which is kind of like a reverse, do you know, Family Feud. Yeah. It's kind of the reverse of that, in that you're actually looking for the answers that no one has said. Um, so it's kind of the opposite of, of Family Feud, in a sense. Um... So, there was a time that, like, there was something, like, you know, a certain topic on there, and he was like, oh, Owen, you know, come here and see if you can get these. And I was like, yeah, I got, I, I, just by looking at it, I know the answer to all of these. And then my mother came home from work, um, and my father was telling her about that, and uh, she had two guesses for what, what the answer is. Yeah, she got a second guess. Her first guess was, was it horror? Like horror films and stuff, um, and my father was like, "No." Then she was like, "Is this a Disney animation?" And he was like, "Yes." <laughs> so, it's, it's and I think that's a pretty good kind of summary of some of my tastes. Like, I love Disney animated movies. Well, a lot of the older stuff, really. Actually, a bunch of the Disney animated movies I've watched recently haven't exactly done it for me. But I think the most recent. Disney animated movie that I actually really liked was, um, I think even in America, was it, is it called Zootropolis? I think over here it's called Zootopia, or is it the other way around? Uh, it's Zootopia here. Okay, so it's Zootropolis here, okay. Uh, but that was the last Disney animated movie that I was like, this that this actually really, really good. And then the ones I've watched after that, which I haven't seen, like I'm not super up to date, like I haven't seen Encanto, I haven't seen Whatever that one was called recently, the Straight World or something. I honestly but, haven't been keeping up myself. Yeah, but going back to maybe it's a bit more appropriate rather than talk about Disney here. Maybe I should talk about the horror movies that I like to watch. Um, so, like, I love horror, uh, and actually, I have like four shelves of like DVDs and Blu-rays of horror films. Like, I just absolutely adore the stuff, and. I guess we are in Halloween now, actually, so <laughs> it's a horror game, it's, it's still relevant. So We tried. We tried, we sure did. Um, so basically, there's a lot of different genres of horror that I like, and actually, maybe before I even talk about horror movies in general, what are your like personal takes when it comes to horror? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Are there certain genres you like? What's I mean, I am enjoying this game, because it definitely has that horror element in the zombies. Um, what did I watch? Oh, like, I'm into, like, a lot of Japanese anime, and I have been I guess, what I got into this anime called Another recently. Oh, yes, I've heard of Another. In fact, actually, I have the book, uh, the original book that it was based on, but, um, I wouldn't uh, recommend going down this way, just to tell Oh, hi. Yeah, I'd say run and just leave him. I wouldn't bother wasting any ammo on him. You forgot that he's there. Do you remember? That's the guy at, that you go all the way down the hallway, grab a defensive knife, and then he shows up around the corner so you can use your defensive knife on him. <laughs> so yeah, another. I am aware of another. That's the one that um, a lot of people like to talk about. In fact, a friend of mine... In fact, I'll just say her name, because she's the one that's on my channel as well, Caitlin. Uh, she loves another, and she always talks about the Umbrella sequence. Um, but I tried reading the book, and I admit that I wasn't taken with it. Now, I haven't watched much, if any, of the anime, so maybe I'd like the anime more, but I, the book didn't necessarily appeal to me. Um, I am actually watching, at the moment, though, maybe you've seen it already, King Rashi. I am aware of the name, I haven't seen it. 
Ah, okay. It's pretty good. I would definitely recommend it. It's uh, one that I consider to be kind of more true horror when it comes to anime, because I would also consider another to be true horror, but a lot of anime, when it comes to horror, use it more for the aesthetic rather than the actual horror. Like, so examples I like to bring up with people is, like, for instance, you know, Helsing. Right. Like, Helsing is, you know, there's a lot of horror aspects to Helsing, but ultimately it's an action show. Um, so, like, I wouldn't consider that to be a proper horror series. Similar things with, you know, other words that kind of play with more of the aesthetics. Like, for instance, I believe there's a show called Black Blood Brothers, which is all to do with vampires. And, um... That one, again, I would say is the aesthetic of horror, but not really actual horror. Um, so yeah, there's um, it's an interesting area. And actually, horror animation is something that I would love to see more of, just because I love animation, I love horror. There are zombies here, I can tell you. Um, what do we need for this one? Armor. Yeah, we're finding every, uh, every door the size of one that we actually need. <laughs> oh, but exploration is part of the fun of this game. So, I guess I'll go back to my taste now when it comes to the horror. So recently, I've been watching um, a bunch of movies uh, that are referred to as New French Extremity. New French Extremity. That, just to make sure that that didn't sound like I was saying nude. <laughs> French yeah, extremity. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come, no. <laughs> it's so, done. New French Extremity is kind of um, like a movement of horror that comes from France, or at least France, French adjacent areas as well. Because, for instance, I do believe some movies from Belgium and uh, French speaking Canada sometimes get included. But, um, the actually, you might have heard of a couple of these. So, the most famous movie probably from that is a movie called Martyrs. I don't know if you've ever heard of that one. Um, no. Okay, that's fair. Um, there's a few other ones that are probably pretty famous. Uh, Irreversible is one. Um, Revenge is another one. Climax. Raw. Actually, Raw is quite famous recently. Um, but I don't know if you've heard of any of those. I apologize. I am oblivious no to these. It's quite niche, so I, I think it's forgivable. Um, but they do some crazy stuff. Uh, for one, they tend not to shy away from like the gore, which is something that I quite enjoy myself. I love the visual effects uh, that are used for um, for gore in films. Um, actually, I can talk about Tom Speedy, which is like his legendary uh, special effects guy. But for that. Let me tell you some of the crazy things that happens with some of these. That's the map, just to tell you. Do you, do you remember if we were in here, we did the map. Oh, um, right. Um, but for instance, let's take that movie Irreversible. There's a lot of very controversial things about that movie. Um, but one thing that's kind of an interesting gimmick of it is that it's a movie told in reverse. Um, now, it's not... It's not, like, done within the scene, so it's scene by scene. But we start with the last scene first and work our way back to the first scene of the movie, which is last. So it's a bit uh, timey-wimey. A, a bit, yeah. It's it's a very interesting movie. A very tough movie, in many ways. Um, have you ever heard of a film critic uh, who is now deceased, but very famous, called Roger Ebert? I... <laughs> Again, that one's lost on me. No problem. He ran a show um, at the movies decades. It was like uh, Siskel and Ebert at the movies. Then it was Ebert and Roper, that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, he had um, he reviewed uh, Irreversible, and he has a very interesting quote when it comes to that movie. Uh, he described it as a movie so violent and cruel that most people will find it unwatchable. So, I mean, I, there, I think I know the specific art that he's talking about and yes it's a incredibly tough sequence to watch but um it's ultimately a very interesting movie not for the faint of heart i will say so uh, you're, you're really into the, the the gruesome aspect of horror stuff yeah but i also want story uh and like 
feeling with it because I'm not simply in there for the extreme stuff. Um, there's, um, do you know the the iceberg meme? Like yeah. the, yeah, you do. So there's what's called a disturbing movie iceberg, uh, which is basically like eight tiers, like things getting increasingly more and more sadistic, um, and basically everything from tier five onwards is trash. Sure, it's extreme. But there's like the production quality is abysmal. The stories are non-existent for the most part. Like they're terrible movies. In fact, a lot of ones even on like tier four and tier three, to be honest. Like, um, if I had to describe this iceberg to you, so like the first tier is your kind of you know your average horror movies. You know the ones that kind of everyone knows and enjoys. Stuff like Friday Thirteen, stuff like Nightmare on Elm Street, Child's Play, all those kind of ones. And right. then Tier Two is where things start getting a little tougher. So you got, you know, your Saw movies, you got Hostel, um, all those kind of ones. Interestingly, actually, the first Human Centipede is on that tier as well. Which I don't know if I'd put Human Centipede on the same level as Hostel and Saw. Like Human Centipede is much more weirder. <laughs> yeah, that one's you, a, that one just has a leg up on everything. Uh, yeah, well, like, you kind of wish actually, because um, they, do you know? I don't know if you know this actually. There's two more Human Centipede movies that they made after that. There is. Yeah, there is. Yeah, a lot of people are very surprised to hear that there's. It's a trilogy. There's a trilogy of Human Centipede films, and they are crazy <laughs> uh, sounds like a bit of a nightmare and speaking of nightmare we're gonna have to end this one off that's fair that's fair um, uh, I basically just re-explored everything that we already did last time but, yeah uh, well, that's we did find that new that trap though so we're gonna have to figure that out next time um, I'm your host, Nightmare, and this has been Resident Evil HD Remastered. A, uh, uh, I'm, and a brief history of my guest. I'm Owen, also known as Immortalium from Victory Chief Gaming, and I'm also signing out. Tune in next time.